Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Tiffany Benson, one part of Team Benson. And I'm gonna say that I was pretty tired today and I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna do Vlogmas, <laughs> even though it's only day three. But then I went to the mailbox and something came in the mail and it just perked me right back up and I came, I got my phone, got the tripod, and I came out to my garden. So today's video, I'm going to get to what I got in the mail. I will get to that. But today's video, we're going to talk about taking care of your composting worms in the winter. Now for me, I have composting worms versus regular earthworms. In my garden, I could not find a worm to save my life. I didn't even, I don't even think I had any. So I actually purchased red regular, red wiggler composting worms from the AZ worm farm. I'll link them down below if you guys are in Arizona and I think you also can order them online too as well if you guys wanted um, composting worms for your garden too. Now when it comes to composting worms they're different from like earthworms. They're not just like the regular worms that you would normally just dig in the ground and find. Usually they're in composting situations which are really nice because they will deliver a lot of worm castings to your garden. Now, you can do composting worms one or two ways. You can have a composting bin, which I thought about, and then I was just like, maybe that's not a great idea to have just a bucket of worms in, I mean, I have a small space garden, so I also have a small space house. <laughs> and then, I saw that you could do composting in ground. So I actually have a worm compost bin. Now I do have worms in other parts of my garden that are not connected to this bin. So I will go over what I'm doing for them, but I'm gonna show you what all I'm doing for my worm compost right now. So on a side note guys, I planted Kentucky Wonder pole beans right here because I wasn't so sure about my um, Chinese bread long noodle beans being able to survive the cold and I know my pole beans will do okay until it gets super cold which it's not really super cold right now so I planted them just in case see if they grew and look they are popping up all over my trellises so this is my worm bin now first I have it connected to the bed which is this is my long bed it's my big L bed and it's connected with chicken wire I use chicken wire like duct tape for those of you guys that haven't noticed in my garden yet. <laughs> but I have just some chicken wire in between the bricks just to so that the, the worms can actually go in and out of this bin. So I'm not sure if it's just that the worms are reproducing because it's a lot colder and cooler outside, but my worms are voracious little eaters right now. <laughs> so uh, I have to feed them at least about once a week. Now what I feed them is just basically old kitchen scraps um, and I will have just a little baggie in my house that as I'm cooking I just take the kitchen scraps and just throw in there. I have a stock baggie and I have a worm baggie. So the worm baggie contains like ends of like greens or just like sometimes different like casings of like tomatoes or like different things like that. I do stay away from potato skins and also carrot tops because I put, used to put those in my worm bin and they sprouted and so it was just like a mess trying to like get those out. But greens are a big one and greens are something that we always have in our house. In fact, at the end of the season when I'm pulling up all my greens and they're all like worm written and just craziness, I actually soak them to get all the worms off and then I chop them up and I put them in the freezer and I wait for them to be able to be worm food. So these are actually greens from my garden last year because I found a bag. So I'm just gonna go dump this into my worm bin right now. So I want you guys to see this, that digging in here, the soil is very, very loose. It's almost like little granules. Now that is because at this point, this is mostly just compost or worm castings um, is what it is. So basically it's just worm poop. Now this is really, really good to just take a scoopful and put it throughout my garden. 
So all I do is I dig a hole and I stick the scraps down in there and then I just want to bury them. Now since I had a problem with rodents and different things like that, the lid helps but burying them also helps kind of mask the smell. So I'm just going to bury that and then we are all good. I'm going to give this a little bit of a water and put some water on it and then I'm going to put the lid right back on. Now I water my worm compost bin the same way that I water my garden, sometimes even a little bit less. So I water it once every two days, which right now I'm on an every two day schedule for watering my garden. And if it looks like it's still like a little bit muddy or something like that, then I won't add water to it because you don't want it to be sopping wet when you know it's like the temperatures are dropping or anything like that. But right now it's doing well the soil is looking good and what I do is I want to have as much composting acting going on in there so they can create a lot of worm castings so then I can take those worm castings and put them throughout the bed when it comes time for the spring and I'm amending my beds this is how you're able to provide amendments for your soil in your small space gardens now when it comes to adding more soil in there, I take the old soil out of the pots that have grown big vegetables that I can't reuse the soil in those pots and I knock off that soil in there. And I let the worms kind of just re-go back through that soil to eat any roots that are in that soil in those pot that was from those pots and then they just do the process all over again where come around this time I open it up and it looks like worm castings. Now for my beds that don't that are not attached to that in-ground worm bin, I do dig a little hole and provide some of the worms like food in there too as well. So for this bed, I feed it about once every two weeks um, just because there's not as many worms in here. But I dig a little hole just right in the side, normally over here where it's out of the way from any of my vegetables that are growing. And I just stick a couple of leaves in there, um, usually like some spinach leaves or some kale leaves or collard leaves, something like that. I put that in there and just let the worms have that. I also do the same thing for my herb bed. Just in the back there, I dig a little hole and put some, a couple of leaves in there and the worms are able to eat that. So here's a side note guys. My basil did not like the cold from last night or it just needs a little bit more water. Either or, I'm gonna give it some water right now just because I'm looking at it and I can see that it kind of needs it and it feels, the leaves feel really limp on it. And then I'm also going to cover this one up tonight. So I meant to put my basil in a pot and versus putting it in there with the rest of my herbs because my basil and my mint are my particular herbs during this time of the year because they like to have a certain amount of water and they also like to have a certain amount of warmth. So if they start looking a little ratty tatty then I put a covering over them so that then they can stay warm when it drops down to like 40 degrees at night. But it should be fine. We'll see. I haven't had basil this long during this time of year so it's been nice having basil in my garden. So what do I have in my pocket that came in the mail that scared me when I just ran downstairs because <laughs> I had to run in for a second. But I have seeds. My seed order came in from Baker Creek and what really excited me was that I got a free seed that it was something that I've thought about growing but I don't know how to cook it and I thought I should probably grow that so that I could learn how to cook it. So I'll show you guys what I got and then I'll show you guys the free seed. So I got some more beans. These ones are my favorite beans. These are the dragon tongue. Um, I went through a lot of dragon tongue beans when the rats were eating all of my beans. So I needed to get some more and I wanted to get them before they sold out. Now I would tell you guys right now, um, get a part of some seed swaps, start ordering your seeds because their Baker Creek sold out when everything started happening and they actually like closed their website because they sold out. <laughs> well, they didn't close it, they just sh shut it down to where you couldn't order. So I wanted to make sure I got the seeds that I wanted. I have a lot of seeds of things that I grow 
in my house right now and I'm also in a seed swap so I have seeds so I wasn't worried about it but the ones that I wanted to make sure that I had that I've seen I wanted to make sure I got them early enough to where that I didn't miss out on getting them so I got this new okra guys it's called a heavy hitter okra now we go through okra like nobody's business we make a lot of gumbo and a lot of okra stew because we love okra I don't like store-bought okra so I only uh, have okra when there's okra in my garden or if I take the okra that's in my garden and then I preserve it so I put it up and I freeze it but once it's gone it's gone so our normal okra plants will give us a bunch of okra but not enough to really sustain our okra needs so I thought that if I got this heavy hitter one look at how many are on there guys if my okra plants do that I will be excited so I usually put the okra back here in this bed where this tomato is and then I'm gonna try putting it in some pots too as well I might actually just put the heavy hitters here and then I'll put the regular um, ones that I have in the pots are maybe in this side bed and then I also went through a lot of Chinese long red long noodle beans because the rats like those too <laughs> so I am ordered some more of these and then I'm trying a new bean, and this one is called the Cherokee Trail of Tears. Now, there was a pretty interesting story on this one that I'll let you guys go to Baker Creek and read. Um, I will link Baker Creek down below, but I thought it was pretty cool, and I was like, huh, I'll try growing that. And a lot of people have said that they do well in Arizona too as well. Now, these are gonna be the seeds that I plant in the spring, so I wanted to make sure that I had them. Now, for something that I'm so excited about growing, but I'm also like, oh my God, it's probably gonna take over my garden because I've seen some craziness of people growing these, but I think it'll be beautiful if it actually works. Ah, fly, um, is some loofah. Now, I am really big on trying to provide my family with everything that it's possibly gonna need, whether I'm preserving it or I'm growing it or whatever and I think that growing some loofah this is the dishcloth loofah is gonna be amazing because I cook a lot so we clean a lot <laughs> and I think that having something that's natural that I'm cleaning with is going to be nice so I'm excited about these and then the one thing that I'm really excited about that was our free seed this fly is attacking me guys is this early purple kurabi now I've seen kurabi and I thought it looked so interesting, but I never, I never have eaten it. So I'm excited to try this this year and see how it goes. I am going to be putting all of these seeds in underneath the grow lights. So probably about next week, you guys see me. Well, you guys will see me putting those in the grow lights and starting to get them going because this is going to be my spring garden along with all of this that survives through the spring. So there's nothing more motivating than a big pack of seeds in the mail. <laughs> I love it. So I was going to go through and show you guys a lot of things in the garden because there's a lot of things that just sprouted. But I think I'm going to wait until tomorrow because I still have like, you know, a million days left of Vlogmas. I don't want to show you guys all of it right away. But let's go inside and I'm going to show you one of my new favorite things that I did for Hanukkah. Okay guys, so here it is. This is my Hanukkah dining room table. So I have just the theme of having the silver and white and silver and white plates. And then I have the menorah. And then I also have just some silver, um, what are those called? Mistletoes. <laughs> and then some candles with the uh, um, Star of David on them. So that I'm really proud of. All right guys, so that is Vlogmas day three. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I am going to make something really good for dinner tonight because it's probably gonna be a little bit cool. So maybe a nice stew, stew or soup. Actually, I made a really good soup yesterday if you guys follow me on Instagram, which I'll put the link right there. But um, it was using only things that I preserved. I wanted to challenge myself on Instagram, so I did that, so you guys should check it out. It turned out really, really yummy. So until next time, grow yourselves a garden because even a small space will provide you with tons of food. Bye guys.